Hi folks, this is Bart from BartB.ie. For the last while I've been experimenting with videoing myself cycling with the GoPro HD Hero 2 and I've been exper experimenting with quite a few different ways of doing things and I just thought I'd share how I'm getting on and some of the experiences I've been having. Hopefully it might save some of you having to do quite as much as experimentation as I've been doing. I've been experimenting basically with three different ways of mounting the camera. So first off, mounting it to my head using the basic head mount that came with the GoPro Outdoor Kit. Then I purchased the handlebar kit from GoPro and experimented with that for a little. And then finally I went for the chest mounted kit, which is actually quite expensive. But, you know, it's quite good actually. So I experimented with that as well. So we'll go through how I got on with all three of those options. Let's start by looking at the simple head mount. So this is just a video of me cycling around the block with the GoPro mounted to my head and you know basically it's gonna make you seasick. Um, you need to look left and right so you don't get killed and in the process all of your viewers are going to chuck up their dinner. So really not very good solution at all in my opinion. The only advantage it has is that it's quite low on vibrations because you know your body tends to insulate your head from vibrating no matter what's going on. But really I don't think it's viable unless you like throwing up. After I realized how badly the head mount would work, the first thing I tried was to purchase a handlebar mount, or officially a handlebar and seat post mount from GoPro's website. So they come in at about $20. And I didn't just try this in one way, I actually tried using this mount in um, two different physical mountings and three different ways of using it. So first off I just mounted it to the handlebar in sort of the quote unquote traditional way and went for a cycle to see what I saw. And then I tried mounting it in a rather interesting way to the crossbar and I tried that both as video and as a time lapse and you'll understand why as we look at the video. So let's start by just looking at using the GoPro on the road uh, when mounted with handlebar and straight away what you should see is that even on a decent road there's actually quite a bit of vibrations travelling up through the front wheels, through the frame and up to the handlebars. And because the camera has a rolling shutter, as is the norm, um, that gives funny distortions when the vibration kicks in and the scene sort of wobbles kind of unpleasantly. The next thing that you'll notice is that the vibrations also cause a horrible hum to be heard the whole time. Now I've actually turned the volume on the track down dramatically here when I've included it in this compilation. Basically it just maxes out the sound the whole way up to 100% and it's this constant horrible hum which is the tyres vibrating on the road and even when you go off road you still get that same horrible hum. So that's, there's really nothing you can do about that, that's just a factor of, you know, you've connected it to something that's vibrating. Obviously compared to the head mount, the um, handlebar mount definitely is less disorienting because the camera's always pointing vaguely in the direction the bicycle is moving, but you actually move the handlebars quite a lot more violently than you actually move the direction the bike is going. So it does kind of give you sort of a side to side and swaying, particularly when you're going off road and you're dodging around obstacles and things. And this effect is magnified dramatically if you try to speed up your footage to try sort of, you know, compress time for a long cycle. To try to get around the problem of the handlebars sort of going side to side too much and basically having the whole shot sort of shake around horribly when you speed it up, I thought maybe the answer is to mount the camera to the frame of the bike, because the frame of the bike is pointing in the direction the bike is going much more than any other part of the bike. Um, so I had to use the 90 degree turn um, sort of arrangement, so on the crossbar, underneath the handlebars, it does give you the advantages you can frame the handlebars in the shot, so you really get the sense that you're cycling, which you definitely were missing um, with the basic handlebar mount, and so I gave that a go. As you can see, very very clearly, this is a video taken on a bike. You can watch the handlebars moving independently of the frame and you definitely know that you're cutting down on the side-to-side -side shaking uh, which will make the footage 
nicer to speed up but as you can clearly see here on what's a very smooth surface the vibrations are much much worse and I actually put it down to the 90 degree bracket not being rigid enough it allows the camera to vibrate in a way that just mounting it directly onto the handlebar mount just never did needless to say this effect gets much worse when mountain biking so the rolling shutter just really really kicks in to the point that it becomes absolutely horrible as you can see here that footage just isn't watchable you can nearly get seasick from the rolling shutter effect so the vibrations really do seem to kill this particular mounting choice but there is a way around that problem the way I've discovered of getting around the vibrations from having it mounted with the 90 degree bracket on the crossbar is simply to use time-lapse so what you're seeing here is a time-lapse taken uh, every half second so two shots a second and there is still if you look very carefully you'll notice there's still small amounts of rolling shutter effects but they're quite subtle because the vibrations are short enough that you do get away with getting a fairly clean shot each t you know twice a second in this case and so as you can see when you put it together you get actually quite a stable view the distant horizon isn't jiggling around too much the vibrations aren't really particularly obvious even here as we're seeing an off-road scene it, you know it's quite stable and watchable things aren't perfect of course there's always a downside to everything so the obvious one is there is no sound the next thing to note is that the camera is actually quite low down so although here we're at a beautiful part of the Royal Canal you can't even see the water because the canal is uh, the camera is so low so you know not perfect um, also you can't do a time-lapse in real time because then it isn't a time-lapse anymore so this is only useful if you want to speed up the footage if you want it in real time this isn't gonna save you although I was quite happy with the handlebar mount particularly mounted sideways and done as a time-lapse I was keen to try the chest mount as well because I had a feeling that would give a particularly pleasing result. So the first obvious thing you'll notice is that it's very, very clearly a video of someone out cycling. Um, the other thing is because your chest is much higher up than the handlebars, you have a much better view of what's going on. So as you can see here in the clip, I'm about to turn around the corner and head down to the canal. And this time you're actually going to see that I'm cycling next to a canal because the camera is up high enough. The next thing you'll probably notice is that the sound is actually okay. It's not spectacular, but I was using the full waterproof housing, which means the sound is muted even if the camera is sitting still. Um, also, I didn't do a really good job of mounting the camera because I left it in such a way that there was something that could bang into the camera housing as I was vibrating around on the bike. So you'll hear the odd bang, 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 and that's not that shouldn't really be there if I had been more careful about how I mounted things, that wouldn't have happened. So, because it's, the camera is mounted to flesh, well, flesh through clothes, but through flesh rather than straight to a metal frame, those vibrations that were causing that strong hum with the handlebar mount are completely gone. So, it's, you know, what sound there is, is clean, assuming you don't let anything bang into the camera. Well. For all the same reasons that you don't get the hum in the audio, you also don't get the horrible rolling shutter effects because your arms and your legs insulate your chest from sharp vibrations very well. You still move around and you still the camera still shakes, but they're not sort of very sharp vibrations. They're much more gentle and they don't cause the rolling shutter effect. So as you can see here, I'm about to go off-road and it's shaky and you know, things are banging around, but you don't get the horrible rolling shutter effect. I had expected that the most stable view would be this one from the chest mount but actually that's not how it works out because when you're cycling on a bike you're actually weaving your chest actually moving around a lot more than I had realized relative both to sort of the far distance and sort of rocking side to side quite a bit so when it comes to speeding things up it's actually not as stable as mounting it to the crossbar but you don't have the horrible vibrations.
as you can see here speeding up even eight times is just not really workable there's just too much movement the horizon is shaking around horribly completely disorienting for any viewer so i wish this had worked better um for speeding it up but unfortunately it just doesn't So just to finish up with some final thoughts, if you want to render video showing yourself cycling in real time, I think despite being expensive, the chest mount is definitely the best way to go. You really get a feel that you're seeing a video taken on a bicycle with your two arms, the handlebars, the front wheel. Um, it's stable enough to enjoy at 1x speed. There's no horrible vibrations because your arms and legs are damping those out. So no horrible rolling shutter effect. A very, really, you know, quite a good video. But remember that it just will not speed up well. It will look absolutely awful when sped up. So if you want to speed things up, then really the best option is the handlebar mount, but mounted sideways to the crossbar. And um, that gives a very stable view so that even as you speed things up, the horizon isn't jumping around horribly. I mean, it moves around a little because you're still on the bike, but it's not horrible. And you also get the sense that you're on a bike because you have the handlebars framing the shot. Unfortunately, you're quite low down so a lot of the landscape is blocked by if any tall grass next to whatever path you happen to be on or whatever but it's still it's a very pleasing result all in all so i think they're your two best ways of using the gopro hd hero 2 for um filming yourself while cycling